What's up, y'all? Hello, hello. Welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time, go right on ahead and hit that subscribe button um, because I'm going to be um, doing a lot of videos about nursing and about hair. Um, if one of those has got to apply to you, right? And so um, if it does, which I'm sure that it will, uh, just go ahead and hit subscribe. Um, hit the notification bell so that you know when I put some new stuff out. Uh, my name is Nana. I'd probably, I probably didn't even introduce myself. I'm Nana. If this is your first time, my name is Nana, the lock nurse. Um, I have been a nurse for 11 years and I've had my sister locks for a little bit over a year. So I love both those both those things and I that's what I talk about on my channel and a smattering also of, of a plethora, if you will, of other things also that I that I talk about. Um, but thank you for being here. Thank you for watching this video. Um, this video is going to be a nursing video. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about um, CV nursing because I um, have been a CV nurse for about six years, and I know that um, it's a field that a lot of you know other nurses um, are interested in. And so I just wanted to talk a little bit about my about my experience, about how I got there, and um, a few things about. Uh, a few things to expect if you are um, aspiring to become aspiring to be a CV nurse um, and um, I hope that this video is about like I said before I've been a nurse for about 11 years and I have been an ICU nurse for about six years and out of those six years five five of those six years was work was in a, a CV ICU slash CT ICU um, so I've seen a lot um, I have experienced a lot done a lot of the ICU thing love I, I'm a critical care nurse ever since I did ICU there was no way that I I knew that there was no way that I could go back um, um, to anything else now before I got here I started I started out as a med surge nurse and then um, after that I went to a uh, progressive care uh, and when I worked on a progressive care uh, unit it was a step down um, an open heart um, a, a, open hearts the cardiac surgery so cardiac open heart step down and so we took patients that had had open heart surgery that were at least like day one or day two post-op they were kind of done with that critical uh with that um the immediate post-operative period where you know they're being monitored every 15 minutes every hour or so so they're you know they're done with that they're out of kind of that window and they came to our floor and we kind of were kind of the ones that kind of like you know got them back walking and all the chest tubes out and all that good stuff and sent them home we're the ones that discharge them um, home and so I worked on on that floor for about uh, three years I believe um, and I knew that after that I wanted to do critical care I wanted to be right there when those patients came out of surgery um, right out of the OR and so after that I took a position in a CBICU where um, I got to see just that. I recovered many, many, many patients right out of the OR that had had open heart surgery. So I learned a lot about um, about heart surgery, bypass and valves and hemodynamics. Um, and on that floor also, um, if for some reason, you know, our senses wasn't super high or the, if the surgeons were on vacation or if something happened and they weren't doing as many surgeries, we got a lot of um, ICU overflow. And so we got a lot of the medical patients uh, on my unit also. And so obviously I have uh, the medical ICU experience also. So all around, it was a very enriching experience. Um, I definitely have learned a lot, took a lot from that position, but I wanted to just talk to you guys a little bit about CV and all the things that you should expect if you are um, wanting to become a CV nurse. So the first thing that I actually wanted to address was that, you know, the hospital that you are thinking about working at or if that you are working at currently may have um, a, a cardiac ICU that is a combination CT ICU and CV ICU. The difference between the two is that for CV ICU, you're gonna see a lot of a lot of the vascular patients also. Um, and CT ICU is mostly, you know, everything within the thoracic cage. So you're gonna be doing a lot of the lung surgeries, the heart, the heart surgeries, the open hearts, the cabbages, the valves, and stuff like that. Um, the hospital that I worked at, it was it was a combination. So we saw all the thoracic patients and also all the vascular patients. In some hospitals, you might see um, the vascular patients in 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 a, in a on a separate unit, separate from the open heart surgery patients. And so that's kind of something to think about. Um, that's a good question to ask if you're going on an interview and you want to find out exactly what the patient population is. Um, I personally like the CT ICU that those are the open heart patients um, the vascular patients they, they were okay but I kind of you know I just I just thought 
CB, uh, CT ICU um, was just uh, so much cooler. Uh, and that's just me, it depends on you. So some things to expect when you, uh, if you're thinking about working in a CT ICU. So you should expect to be recovering those um, open heart patients, um, sur those open heart uh, surgery patients right out of the OR. Um, I know that in my hospital, they would be, the surgeons uh, would finish or the, P the sergeants and the PAs would finish, close them up down in the OR and we would have to go get them directly from the OR. So you're coming up with like a million pumps you're coming up with um, anesthesia. You're coming up with the OR nurse. Sometimes the attending, if you know it was a difficult case, um, expect to be recovering these patients. These patients are very critical. Um, you know they may look good one minute and the next minute they're crashing. I, I, I saw that many times. And so, you know, the, you need to be on the ball. You need to be on top of things. You need to be on top of their hemodynamics. You need to know a lot about that. Um, before I got, before I started this job, I actually read hemodynamics for dummies and that like saved my life because I didn't know anything about hemodynamics but you know it's very important they're important very important concepts to understand when you're recovering open heart open heart surgery patients so um, you're gonna be facilita facilitating um, they're being they're being exhibited because when they're coming up they're coming up like I said with a million pumps they're coming up intubated so you're you and respiratory are gonna be working together to get them extubated and usually we do that um, at, at least six hours from when they get up on the floor so as soon as they get up on the floor you're turning up their you're turning off their sedation you're trying to wake them up to the point where we can get them extubated and extubated safely um, and you know restore is doing also their thing to make sure that it is safe to get them extubated and that they're not going to get reintubated right away right after extubate them because for some reason they weren't ready so you're going to be facilitating that you're going to be checking their hemodynamics which goes right hand in hand with their urine output i cannot stress enough how important um monitoring their urine output is I've, i i have like so many stories of like somebody whose urine output dropped and the next moment they were on crt uh, not the next moment maybe the next day um some surgeons the surgeons are different i worked with three different surgeons one of them really tanked them um so gave them a lot of volume down in the or and so um because of that they would be a little bit um, a, a, a little bit more a little bit better tank top and so and so you would see that their urine output would keep up a little bit longer after they got on the floor and then another surgeon was not was not like that he liked to keep them dry in the OR and so as soon as they got to us the urine output was dropping and we had to be on top of that giving albumin giving fluids you know giving boluses and so you just kind of have to like you know keep that in mind and and be very very vigilant about your not but as soon as it drops you need to be on top of it and yes. then giving those fluids I could do a whole video on the urine output and how important it is for um, immediate immediate post-op immediate post-operative uh, CV patients because that's that's how important it is. I could do a whole video. Another thing that you're going to be uh, contending with is pain. These patients have had their chest cut open. They are very 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 sore. They are in a lot of pain, and so you have to be like you have to like preemptively strike. You need to like have your PRNs ready. You need to have your morphines, your oxys, your Percocets, whatever it is that you uh, that you need uh, to make the patient as comfortable as possible. You have to let them know also you're not going to be able to take their pain away. You can make it manageable so they can cough and deep breathe because that's super important. We don't want it. We, we don't want them to get pneumonia while in the hospital. You want them to be able to do their pulmonary toileting as comfortable as possible, but you cannot take all their pain away. So that's also something that they need to understand before. And uh, tied into that also is on my floor anyway, we would have the patients, we would pre-op the patients, and so we would do a lot of that education. It's so important for them to be aware of everything they're going to be contending with um, after their surgery. And so if you happen to have contact with the patients before they go into surgery, try to do that education, teach them all these things, make them aware so that they're not like taken by surprise after surgery. And then they're like, oh my God, if I'd known this, I would never have done it. I can't tell you how many times I've heard that. So many patients, you know, didn't know how much it was going to hurt. And now they're, they were regretting their decision. I mean, of course, by that time it's too late anyway, but if you are able to have the patients before they go to surgery do that education. Another very important thing to keep in mind to or to keep monitoring is bleeding. You, um, your patient 
is has a very high likelihood of bleeding and you will see that in the patient's chest tube and um, even before the chest tube sometimes in the labs sometimes you'll see it in the chest tubes before you see it in the labs um, your hemoglobin is going to drop and then you'll know and then all the hemodynamics you know their their pa pressures the blood pressure on the a line and the cuff will, will start to kind of sag the urine output will sag everything will start to kind of like become soft and that's when you'll know and if you don't see it in the chest tubes um, if you don't see them coming out in the chest tubes, they could be doing it internally. And so you need to be on the ball. Whenever you see stuff like that sagging, all your pressure's kind of dropping, you need to keep, yeah, keep thinking about that. That's huge, huge, huge. Bleeding is huge for any surgery, but especially for open heart surgery. So definitely, definitely keep an eye on that. Another thing to expect um, if you're working a CT ICU or CV ICU is that you're going to be taking care of lung patients and uh, most of the time these patients are patients that have had some sort of like malignancy, some sort of lung cancer, so they need a wedge resection which is like just getting part of a, a lung removed or a lobectomy which is a whole lobe removed or a pneumonectomy which is when you have the whole lung removed. I've seen that many times and a lot of that, a lot of times that is because they have some sort of malignancy you know spot showed up on an x-ray or pet scan or anything like that and so they have to have that taken out and then possibly do radiation um, or chemo um, but these patients um, also end up on on a CT ICU uh, if they need if their recovery um, is kind of like more in depth then they need a little bit more critical care that, that you know maybe the first 12 or 24 hours or so right after they have surgery now you're gonna become very very um, well-versed and very familiar with chest tubes uh, and chest tubes are not hard um, once you've had you know 10 of them you become pretty much an expert um, but chest tubes are gonna become your life and uh, taking them out and troubleshooting and stuff like that and it's some hospitals um, allow the nurses the floor nurses to take them out I, I worked at one hospital that allowed that allowed that I worked I worked another hospital where only the providers did that so it depends on where you work uh, but chest tubes are gonna become your best friend and pain management is a biggie um, the chest tubes hurt chest tubes hurt a lot and some of these people especially the open heart patients they have four chest tubes the lung patients you know most of the time have one or two um, but they're still they're very sore they're sitting right in between um, your ribs where all your nerve endings are it's it's very painful the patients are very uncomfortable they don't want to cough or deep breathe which is like so 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 important so you have to stress pulmonary toileting but you also have to make sure that their pain is well managed because otherwise they're not going to be able to do what you're asking them to do um, some CT surgeons also um, um, when they do uh, obviously them doing thoracic surgeries they also do esophagectomies which also is usually some sort of like cancer that they're trying to cut out um, and esophagectomies are rough I do not have good experiences with esophagectomies but I haven't seen that so much the hospital that I worked at um, in this in the CT ICU I saw maybe two esophagectomies in the five years that I worked there and but the hospital that I worked in before that where I worked in the Gribret Pro progressive care uh, we saw esophagectomies left and right so I don't know exactly if that's something that's being phased out or what but um, I know that that's a possibility but I just haven't seen it um, as much uh, lately so the next the next thing that you should be expecting is to take care of the vascular patients especially if you work in a CV ICU you're gonna be working with vascular patients and these are the patients that have like the fem fem bypasses or the fem pop bypasses um, they have uh, an AV fistula created or um, a triple A repair or um, any stenting um, CEAs which are the carotid endarterectomies where they go in and they you know if they have if you have um, any kinds of like plaque buildup or anything in your carotid arteries they go in and they clear it out sometimes they put stents in um, these are the these are kinds of patients that you should you should also be expecting to take care of with this population population of patients what I would say uh, would be the most important is when you have those fem pops and those fem fems just make sure your pulses are good make sure your extremities are warm make sure the cap refill is good for the CEAs definitely definitely stay on top of the patient's mental status because that is a you know there's a high likelihood that they could develop a stroke maybe you know they didn't get all the plaque something anything could happen I've seen that happen where a CEA patient ended up with a stroke so um, that is definitely one of the big things to monitor with the CEAs all the other um, all the other ones just make sure your patient's blood pressure is not dropping make sure you know everything make sure they stay stable blood pressure is not dropping and also just 
keep making sure that your pulses what um wherever that surgery was done that the pulses uh, distal to that or proximal to that how whichever way um are nice in um are palpable or even if, even if they're Doppler that they are present and that you do not lose them as soon as you lose them you need to let somebody know right away so the next thing um, that you, you should expect is that you should be you should be expecting to become very familiar with um, some cardiac support devices so um, impellas if you've ever heard of that um, the impella or the balloon pump or IABP that's the other uh, word that we use to describe it um, those are both uh, cardiac support devices and they basically kind of uh, a lot of heart failure patients need that or for some patients that have had you know a very severe STEMI and their EF is super super low and so they even did they needed to transition to transition them from um, having the STEMI into the part where they can go into surgery and have a cabbage done and so they will need to be on an impella or a balloon pump and they might need to be on that maybe a little bit post-operatively too um, so uh, these two machines are very, very important. The Impella is a little bit newer. A lot of uh, the younger doctors or, or um, you know, younger physicians, younger providers are using that more. But some of the older docs like the balloon pump, so they still use that. Um, but they both, you know, kind of do the same thing, but in very different ways. I could do a whole video about those two machines. Um, they're actually very cool. Um, and the other machines um, that you may see also, you may see ECMO which is basically heart lung back bypass that's also for uh, patients that who need their hearts and their lungs to be rested for whatever reason I've seen it a lot in the COVID ICU seen ECMO all over the place in the COVID ICU so that's uh, that's a big thing um, and um, also you an another machine that you might see is the CRT so that's continuous renal replacement therapy and so that's for patients who um, have very high grade uh, renal failure you know they need dialysis but even the intermittent dialysis is not enough they need continuous dialysis and we manage those machines you will be managing that machine um, and that's something and you're gonna get a lot of training if you if you if there's a chance that you'll come in contact with these machines, you're going to get uh, make sure that you get the appropriate training that you need to feel comfortable in order to manage these machines. Um, uh, uh, most of them are really uh, not that com complicated. The the uh, uh, hospital that I worked at where there was a lot of ECMO, we had an ECMO, uh, an ECMO like specialist there and it was either, either a nurse or somebody that was especially trained to manage the ECMO. So you really didn't have to do a whole lot, maybe just draw some labs here and there, but um, they had somebody there managing the ECMO while you kind of did you know, all the other, all the rest of the, of the things with the patient. But these four machines, um, the balloon pump, the Impella, the ECMO, CRRT are definitely um, four things that you should expect to encounter if you want to become um, a CVIC nurse or maybe even an ICU nurse. Last thing I wanted to talk about, um, about things that you should expect if you want to work in a CVICU is you need to be on top of your telemetry. I know that I, I came from a progressive care to the CVICU and we had like uh, a tele monitor. We had we had like a whole like unit of people that were monitoring our tele for us and they would call us when they would see changes or they see AFib or whatever, any arrhythmias they would call us. But in the ICU, especially in the CV ICU, you need to know your telly because you're going to be the you are the one that's going to be looking at your patient's telly and your pa and your patient on the monitor and being like, oh, that looks like AFib or that looks like SVT. That looks like that. That looks like that. You need to be you need to be you need to be on top of that. And it depends on your hospital. Your hospital might have like a training program, like a tele course or something, just to at least be able to recognize what you're looking at and um, have kind of an idea how to even go about it. Like if you see SVT, maybe if the patient is stable, have them bear down, you know, stuff like that. Just little things that maybe you could do while you're yelling for help, while you're yelling for the provider. The other thing also is that on the, in the ICU, a lot of times you'll have a provider on the floor somewhere. Somebody can get to you pretty quickly. And so definitely, definitely use that. If you feel like a patient is crashing, uh, or if you have, if you, you know, a lot of us nurses have that gut feeling, oh, something doesn't look right. I don't feel good about what's going on here. This patient is looking, is, is starting to look, is starting to not look good. Like, do not ignore, ignore that little voice. Go tell somebody. 
tell another nurse, tell your charge nurse, go find the provider and say, I, this is how I feel about this. I can't really explain it, but you know, and present your case. And a lot of times they are absolutely open to it and um, they will help you and try to talk through whatever is going through. And I, I, get, uh, I have seen many a patient being saved that way because a nurse had a gut feeling or a nurse didn't feel good about something. So you, 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 you made it through nursing school. You are a nurse. You, you, you can do it. Do not be intimidated um, by all this information. Absolutely, absolutely going to CV if you want to. It is very rewarding. I can't tell you how rewarding it is to have the patient come in, you know, on a balloon pump. They can't even get up because their ejection fraction is so low. And then they go into surgery, they go have a cabbage, they go do whatever, fix a valve, whatever. They come back. Yes, it takes five to five days or so, four or five days, but they walk out of the hospital. You know, they, they, they walk out of the hospital and go back to their lives and, and end up living, you know, full, full lives after they've come to you in the state that they were in. And I can't tell you how rewarding that is. That's why I love CV nursing so much because we were able to see the patients. We were able to like, quote unquote, fix them and then send them back out into the world to go live their lives. And that to me was very rewarding. So definitely, definitely think about CV nursing. Um, don't, don't be scared. Um, you will learn everything that you need to learn in order to take care of these patients. Um, you, you graduated nursing school, you passed your NCLEX, you can do it. Um, I encourage everybody, um, if you want, if you aspire to do that, absolutely go do that. I hope this video was helpful. Um, if it was, please leave me a comment, like it, leave a comment, ask me any questions that you have. I, you know, I will, if I don't know the answer, I'll try to find the answer. Um, if I know the answer, I'll be glad to share it. Um, like the video, comment, subscribe, uh, and um, hopefully I'll see you next time. Thank you so much for watching.